Muy buenas noches. Um, sean bienvenidos a la clase número 7 de el curso de inglés avanzado 1. Um, ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo han estado? Me gustaría escucharlos. ¿Qué tal el fin de semana? Good evening, teacher. I mean, sorry, because I was, I was speaking, I was speaking in Spanish. <laughs> My God. Uh, <laughs> I thought I thought it was the basic level, sorry, and I noticed right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, guys. Um well welcome to um class number seven. So good evening. Um hello Mr. Torres. How was your weekend, hello. sir? It was good. Working was on, good. On, on working at home, fixing things, and also resting and watching TV with my family. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> very good. So, and enjoying free time, right? Uh, yes. Miss Molina, Miss Molina. Um, good evening, teacher. Good evening, Miss. Uh, how, how was your weekend? My weekend, it was exciting. And because I fixed something in my house. And, oh. but, a little bit was uh, funny because I met with my family in my house and then uh, I celebrate and, uh, my mother's birthday and only that. Oh, okay, okay. That's mean yes. you have a party uh, this weekend. Very good. No, Excellent. exactly a party because mm. my mom passed away. Uh, oh, eight so, years oh my god! Ago and oh. also I tried you to. Were, you were commemorating uh, her day. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, with my family. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, well, Miss Garcia. Good evening. Good evening. I I have Tell me, uh, great, how, was, how was your weekend? Uh, very good. I go do, on Saturday. I mm -hmm. go at the supermarket and then I cooking. I oh. I cooking um so with the oh. vegetables. Then oh. of the afternoon, I clean the house, and on Saturday I got a tour with my family, and in the afternoon I rest in my home. Okay. Only that. <laughs> okay, very good, uh, Miss Mira. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my weekend was. Um, kind of um, dedicated to uh, my service to God. Um, I, maybe I forgot to tell you when I, I introduced myself that I'm a Jehovah Witness. So when I have a free time, I uh, spend some of that time um, trying to uh, write letters or telling other people about my faith. Uh, uh, trying to let them uh, read the Bible, and, uh, advise wow. them to do that. And also, that was on Saturday. Uh, in the morning, I, I did that. And after, at the afternoon, I rested. And on Sunday, we had, um, we now are, uh, we are having our annual assemblies. Uh, so during the morning and the, and Sunday, we meet in our congregation, and after that we see uh, the program. This time we had to see the program corresponding to to the assembly uh, during uh, Saturday, the day Saturday. Uh, so uh, after that we had lunch with our family. And in the afternoon, I watched some TV. And after that, I went out to uh, 
how would you say um, seeing um, at the at the shops uh, the um, mall? We, okay. we went to see something I wanted to buy, but I just uh, saw prices and and didn't buy anything yet because I'm comparing prices. And after that, we, I went to the supermarket and I came home a little bit late, more or less eight at night. And after that, I, I just rested. Okay. okay, very good. That's, that's a, that was a good weekend. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see, Miss Celaya. Michelaya. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Mary. <clears throat> was my weekend was very, very exhausted because really? like Maritza, yes, like Maritza Mira, my family and I are Jehovah's Witnesses. So our week was, was very um, interesting because we had uh, a special event. We enjoyed part of our annual assembly together with our family. So all Sunday was dedicated for that and family having enjoyed time with the family, with our friends and, and brothers. So it was an, a funny and an exhaust day, but it was good, very good. So today, I was working all day, but now, thanks God, I'm here. So it's uh, nice to see you again. Nice to see you, Miss. Okay, um, let's see who else, Mr. Mendoza. Hello, good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my weekend is was very good because I was spending a lot of time with my family. Uh, Saturday in the morning, I was uh, helping my wife doing to the cleaning in the house. In the afternoon, I testing a relax. As uh, Saturday at night, I went to the party with my family too. On Sunday morning, I wake up late because I so tired a little. Uh, after that, I preparing about the lunch. In the afternoon. I went to the church with my wife and family too. And finally, it's a very interesting weekend because I was doing a lot of chores and preparing to something to my work. And that's it. Okay, very good. Very, very good. Uh, Mr. Vasquez. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Okay, well, my my weekend was uh, quite relaxing, and thanks God because uh, the previous week uh, was so stressful, and uh, I was I was very busy, and I could not uh, sleep enough about four hours from Monday to uh, Friday. So I, I took advantage of the uh, free time on the weekend and I <laughs> sleep. I, I recovered the, the, <clears throat> the sleep time and I could, I could rest and spend time with my, with my family. Uh, basically, that was on Sunday, uh, on, on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I spent with my family too watch a movie in the afternoon. Okay, very good. Excellent, sir. Um, let's see who else. Mr. Gomez. Hello, good evening, everyone. And my weekend oh, was, my weekend was very good. And on Saturday in the morning, I do I did some chores here in my house. I bathed my dog. Then in the afternoon, um, 
I went out with my mom to do some shopping. Then on Sunday, um, in the morning, also we went shopping with my mom and dad. Then we had lunch at my aunt's house. Then we came back to our house. And then in the night, I went out to have dinner. And that's all. Okay, very good. Excellent. So let's listen to Mr. Alberto Gomez. Mr. Gomez. Oh, he's gone. Um, who else is missing here? I haven't asked. Ah, uh, Miss Pastor. Hi. Hi, good evening, Miss. Okay, um, on Saturday, I slept until late because I was very tired. So then I stayed in my house um, watching TV and also I saw the soccer game. It was very exciting. Yeah, it was. Salvador versus uh, 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 Qatar. We almost <laughs> so, get it. We yeah, almost I, get I, it. I was, yeah, yeah, I was almost crying because it was very <laughs> exciting. But uh, uh, then Sunday, um, we went to Ilopango Lake, but we went to the to the centro, but we couldn't enter because the COVID restrictions. So we had to come back and then we went to eat with the family. That's okay. on my weekend. Okay, yeah. very good. Uh, Ms. Galdames. Your turn. Good evening. Good evening, <laughs> I was. <laughs> okay. Um, well, my weekend was like every weekend. I went to the park to exercise with my daughter. Uh, wow. This time she invited me to, to have the, uh, breakfast out. Uh, in the afternoon, I did the laundry. <laughs> wow. um, uh, Saturday, uh, Sunday, I went to the supermarket the, and to the market and I cooked for everyone at home. And I did, ta I did take time to watch some TV because I'm getting ready for the next week. I'm trying to relax a little bit. <laughs> we have the end of the month, so we have to stay at uh, work until late. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, yes. Mostly because, uh, uh, well, the next week we had vacations. So that's mean that we're going to have time to spend with our family. And also you're going to have a free week because the next week we are going to be free uh, till the next one. Okay, so very good, Miss. Uh, let's All see. The week, teacher. Sorry? What do you say, Miss? We are going, we are not going to have we are not we going to have we class all we week. We won't have classes next week. Okay, we won't have classes. It's going to be um, vacations, so that means we are free. Uh, let's see. Miss Peraza. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. Okay, um, tell us, how was your weekend? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, my weekend was very good. I stay at home with my children and relaxing. So, all week, all weekend. And on Sunday, I was at the church and in the 
Mira, uh, I cook. Cook it uh, for all. And the rest of the time, I I relax and watch movie with with my children, and that's it. Okay, very good, excellent. And Mr. Uh, Hernandez, hello. Good evening, evening. Mr. Hello, sir. My routine in the weekend um, was um, I gonna um, I went. Do the do the do, do the take a trip in uh, in those planes. Also, um, I went to the beach on Sunday, and I released my homework in all the weekend. So this is this was my activities, Mister. That's okay, it. very good, very good. Um, did I ask you, Mr. Moran? Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my weekend was pretty normal. Yeah. I just okay. help with some chores in my house, and the rest of the time I just lay around. I oh. didn't. I did not do nothing. Nothing. new or exciting uh, okay 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 very good uh let's see who else, who's missing because I, I i'm lost right now because uh i don't know why but this seems uh just update and i was trying like to follow the list that i have here but um i lost some um some names here. Who's missing? Oh, everybody participate. Everyone participate. Hello, teacher. Hello, Mr. Carrillo. Uh, hi, everyone. Good, good evening for everyone. It is glad to greet you. I, I want to participate as a as an exercise of, of expression in this case. Well, my my weekend, uh, actually I am on vacation nowadays. Wow. And I am trying to take some advantage on my planner to the scholarship year 21-22. And for that, I spend my whole morning on Saturday and Sunday uh, doing that planner. In the afternoon, I went to the pool to swim for a while, and that's all. I think in the in the night, I went with some friends to dinner, and a really normal weekend. That's all, teacher. Okay, very good. Someone else. Someone else who wants to share with us his or her weekend. Okay, nobody else. Well, guys, um, well, in my case, I did a lot of things on, on my weekend. Uh, well, one of the things that, that I did was that I visited the church. Um, well, in Saturday, I was like moving from one place to another because I was uh, preparing some things um, in order to to uh, work on some some business that, that, that I have. And, and also on Sunday, I remember that, um, oh, well, on Sunday, uh, I visited the church again because um, I, I went to teach some students because I'm teaching some students uh, in, in, um, in a church. So, that was so my weekend. And then I went to the supermarket to buy some uh, food for me for during for this week. And that was so okay. Uh well, we're going to be working on um this exercise, I mean this topic, uh that is defining and non-defining relative clouds. I don't know if you watched the video. 
If you haven't watched it, we're going to watch it right now. Um, we're going to watch the video that we have on a platform and then we're going to be developing some exercises. Um, we're going to be working in trios, but I will set those trios later. Uh, but uh, the, the, the first thing that we have to do for explaining that is watch the video. Um, I'm going to put, uh, to play the video right now. I, I don't know if you can if you can see in your screen my screen. Can you see it? Yes, uh, sure. Yeah, I, I see it. Yeah. Okay, very good. Excellent. So here. Can you listen to that? No. No, I can't. No, no, it, no teacher. Actually, not, not so loud. Welcome to a new section. Are you ready to give essential? Yeah. What about now? Yes. That's now, good. Now we see. Yes. OK, very good. Um, well, yes. I'm going to play it right now. Uh, please pay attention to this video, because uh, then we're going to be developing some exercises based on this video. and. Yes, we're going to be uh, working just in this video and then we're going to have an exercise about the next one. And I will explain you later that. Okay, pay attention. Welcome to a new section. Are you ready to give essential or optional information about someone or something? We hope you still remember how to do it. Defining and non-defining relative clauses. A defining relative clause defines or gives essential information about a noun. New Orleans is a city where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras. Salvador is famous for food and music that trace their origins to Africa. A non-defining relative clause gives optional information about a noun. Notice the use of commas. Seoul, which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics, is well known for its shopping. There are many temples and shrines in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of Japan. Defining relative clauses function like adjectives because they add information about a noun or a noun phrase. They must always immediately follow the noun they describe. They give essential information about the noun. People like to go to restaurants that have good food. Non-defining relative clauses. Non-defining relative clauses also describe a noun but the information they give is not essential. They are set off by commas. That restaurant which has good food is the most popular one in town. Just to help you out a bit, look at the following. Okay, um, well, we're going to focus on this chart first. Um, we're going to be talking about defining non defining relative clauses as we saw um, in the case of defining uh, relative clauses, uh, we can uh, find essential information about uh, what we are talking in the sentence. Uh, as you notice in the first example that we have here, the, it says New Orleans is a city where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras. Um, that information that is in both it's an information that let us understand uh, the context or a, a specific information um, about what we are talking uh, in the sentence. Okay, because the sentence, they, they if I want to say yes, uh, New, New Orleans is a city. Okay, that's a sentence. Okay, and uh, I understand that, and I and I know that it's a city, but what do I want to say about that city? That's what we're going to describe with the defining relative clause. In this case, because uh, we're talking about New Orleans, uh, we're going to uh, focus this information as an adjective. Why it is called an adjective? Because it's called as an adjective. It is taken as an adjective because uh, it describes the noun or, or what we're talking in this sentence. 
and give more information about it. Uh, for instance, in the, in the exercise, I mean, in the sentence number two, it says, Salvador is a famous food for, uh, a famous, uh, famous for food and music, okay? Salvador is famous for food and music. Okay, very good. We understand that it's a complete sentence, but we want to get, if we want to get more information, we are going to use the relative clause. In this case, what, what is um, relative clauses? Uh, what we are, I mean, um, expressing information and relative clauses because we are um, adding extra information. In this case, it's not like a, a, an optional information. It's an essential information that let us understand what we are talking about in the first sentence. In the case in, of the non-defined relative clauses, in this case, we have just a optional information. We're talking about something, and in, in the middle of it, we add information that it's no relevant, that is a no essential, but we want just to say it. Uh, in, this, in the first example that we have here, it's a CEO which has the 1988 Summer Olympics is well known for its shopping, okay? If we notice, the relative classes uh, doesn't match with the information that we are expressing in the main sentence. We are saying that Seoul is well known for its shopping, but the relative classes, the, the part that is in bold, uh, it doesn't include relevant information for the things that we want to express. I don't know if it's clear in that way. Yes, sure. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay very good. And then we have the second example that says, uh, there are many templates in Trident in, in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of, yeah, of Japan. Okay. That, that, that information is just an extra information. Um, um, something that is like, or can be something that can be differentiated with uh, the first two sentences is that the extra information, in this case, the relative clause, uh, is separated by commas, okay? Um, in non-defining relative clauses, we are going to use commas as the, in, in, in the same way that we use it here in this, in the sentence number one, and in the same way that we use it in the sentence number two. It's separated by comments because just it's just an extra information, not essential, okay? Um, and we can use in, 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 in using the, these two uh, forms. Um, Let's see the next part that it says here. Give me a second. Okay. This part. Okay, the relative classes. The first thing here, it says they add information, that's what I was saying, uh, about a noun or a known phrase. Uh, what is a noun? Do you know what is a noun? Do you know what is a noun? A noun is the name that describes uh, somebody or something. Okay, very good. What else? What's a noun? Okay, thank you, Miss Mira. Um, okay, someone else? A noun, uh, a noun like uh, uh, something. For example, a table, tree, a blackboard, or black white, uh, something like that. Okay, very good. Excellent. Let's see. Uh, who could, else? Be, could be the, the subject of the sentence. Yes, it is. Okay, and what else? Could be identified the uh, places, people, or Thing. Okay, very good. Excellent. I just, I, I just, I got it. 
Okay. And now is is uh, the iron who the people are talking. Yes, uh, but not just an iron. Okay, uh, it's everything that we can see and touch. Okay. Okay. It, Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, we have like a noun. Uh, or oh, in, in nouns, we had like a different categories of nouns. Uh, we have what is called, um, um, it's, it's called like proper nouns and common nouns. We have those categories. Okay, in the case of proper nouns, we have uh, nouns of, of people, okay, of city, and in the case of the uh, common nouns, we have uh, things, we have uh, animals, and how we can identify those things? So, okay, in the in the case of the proper noun nouns, um, we identify it by using capital letters. Uh, for instance, if I say um, uh, Marcos Juan, I used to have capital letters in in that. Uh, proper noun. Uh, or if I say uh, um, Tokyo, okay, if I say Japan, so um, we differentiate those nouns because we're using capital letter. Then we have the common nouns, that is um, all the things that we can see and we can touch and refers to uh, things um, or objects or animals. Okay, so if I say uh, computer, for instance, if I say guitar, if I say uh, window, things like that. So uh, then we have another thing that is called noun phrase. Do you know what is a noun phrase? Do you know what is a noun phrase? Okay, let me explain you this. A noun phrase, it's um, a component. Like um, if I say a red, okay, if I say um, a red carpet, a red carpet. If you notice there, I'm using the noun, an adjective, and an article. That, uh, that composition is called is called a noun phrase. A also noun phrase um, are also a given in the in the in the following way. Get, let me let me let me use the example that we have here. Okay, in the example that we have here, it says we said people like to go to restaurants. People like to go to restaurants that have good food. Okay, that have good food. Um, in in this case, um, if we notice here, like people, it's working as the subject of the sentence. In uh, the verb, in this case, the the, the verb that we are uh, using is like. Okay, people like what? It, what they like? Ah, uh, they like to go to restaurants. In this case, go to restaurants becomes the complement of the sentence, and the rest of the information is going to be. It's going to be used as uh, as a description of the restaurant. Because we're talking about uh, what the people like, okay? Uh, we know people like to go to restaurants. Then we are going to describe the restaurant, the, the noun restaurant, because uh, we are going to add more information. That information, we can use it in the following way. We can use that for expressing something or something extra, uh, like that have good food. Uh, what we are referring here, uh, we are referring to 
the restaurants. Also, um, we have, let me show you this, the noun defining relative clauses. In the case of the noun defining relative clauses, uh, it, it also describes nouns, okay? Uh, it is used to describe nouns. But the, information, but the information that is given, it's not essential. That's what it said. Because uh, it's not relevant for what we are expressing in the sentence. Uh, and one thing that differentiates each of the sentence here is that they are set off by commas. Uh, here we have an example. Okay, here we have an example. That restaurant, in referring to um, a specific thing, it says that restaurant, which has good food, is the most popular, is the most popular one in town. If you notice, we are using the same sentence, but the purpose the, the, of the sentence, it's not the same. In the case of the first one, we are adding information about the restaurant. Okay, and, and that's become a part of the of the of the sentence and it becomes a relative clause. In but in this case, the relative clause is just working uh, or adding something that is not needed in the sentence. Because if I say that restaurant is the most popular one in town, I can understand that. Okay, I can understand it and, and that's all. But sometimes we add that information not to identify something. Uh, we use it because we want to, we want just to add an extra information. Even though it's not needed, but we want to say it. Like that restaurant, which has good food, is the most popular in town. Uh, we're going to find these kind of things in books because uh, it's where um, are given like uh, like more descriptions about the, about the specific things. Uh, they use a lot of relative clauses in order to uh, try uh, that the reader can understand what uh, the writer wants to say it. And uh, he or she can figure it out, uh, the image of that uh, settings that, uh, that, that he's expressing in, in, in words. Um, we're going to find a lot of relative clauses, a lot of known def the defining relative clauses here. Okay, what we're going to do, let's listen to the speaker here. Just to help you out a bit, look at the following charts. They are used in defining and non-defining relative clauses. Come up with your own sentences and ask your teacher to check them out for you. Okay, um, I don't know if you can see the, the charts here. Uh, okay. This charge. Okay. The following relative pronouns are used in defining relative clauses. Okay, we have person, things, place, time, and reason. Um, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to uh, create sentences. We're going to create at least four sentences um, using um, relative pronouns um, in relative clauses. We're going to add, um, well, we're going to use a defining relative clauses and we're going to use on the defining a relative clause. In this case, these are used for defining relative clauses. If you want, you can take an screenshot because um, I won't uh, be able to um, show you the, the, my screen 
in the breakout rooms. So for that reason, I'm asking you to take a screenshot. If you want, you can take a picture uh, with your cell phone or your um, or your tablet or or with the computer. You can take uh, a photo to this uh, video. You're done. You're done. Yes, teacher, I'm done. Okay, very good. Yes. So let's let's see the next one. This one. This one is used for uh, non-defining clauses. Take a screenshot or take a, a photo if you want in order to have that information to create your sentences. Okay, very good. So, is it clear what are you going to do in the breakout rooms? Is it clear? Yes, for sentences. For sentences yes. for each one or in total? For each one, for each okay. one. Okay, okay. Yes, I, I not defining uh, relative clauses and defining relative clauses. Okay, I got it. Okay, uh, you are going to be working in trios. Maybe one group is going to have like uh, four people there, but it's going to be just one because we are right now 15. Okay, I will create the breakout from right now. So if you have any question, remember you have the button that says uh, ask for help or something like that. Okay, um, we're going to have, you, you think that 10 minutes is okay? Yes. Yes, okay, very good. Okay. So I will create a breakout turn right now. See you in 10 minutes. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay, let's go with the first with the relative pronoun. With the check relative clauses. Okay. <laughs> How many sentences do we have to do? We have to do four sentences for relative clauses and four sentences for non-relative clauses. Okay. Got one. I have one with who? Okay, I have one with who too. <laughs> I'm doing one okay. with where. 
Okay, we're, okay, I'm going to do, uh, okay, just to change, I'm going to do uh, one example with which. Which. Which, I'm going to try with which. Yeah, I got it about that. Excuse me? That one. Okay, great, great. And then we, when you finish, please share your your sentences in the chat. Okay. I'm going to share my sentence with you in the chat. Correct. The one that I put. Let me check. I put the mall where we ate yesterday is so big. No, it's okay. It's okay. Let me copy your sentences, guys. Okay. So you have two sentences, Vanessa. Great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. It's better to have more oceans and the selection national. Because you create one with who? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. I create one with which. And the selection national, that first one touch. OK, let me check. I think that I think Liz that you need to add more information for the sentence. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Last weekend. I don't know if it's correct. The musician. Sorry, I don't listen good. I have other sentences. I write the company which give good benefit is is way. Is far away. Uh, Adela, or let me try let me try with this. Yesterday I went to the restaurant that my mother like the most. What do you think? Sorry, repeat. Please. Okay, yesterday I went to the restaurant that my mother likes the most. I think. The, because true. we are using that. Yes. Yes. Problem with the place. Is uh -huh. we have is the, the, place, the place where your mother life. Uh huh. Do you think that work? Yes, for me, how okay, how sense. Mm Yeah. <sighs> 
uh, what about this? I have this one. The, the, it's more or less like the one you said at the beginning. Uh, the little kid, the little kid who's jumping on top of your car is my nephew. Okay, Mar Marisa, do you do you have uh, some idea for the second one? No, 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 no. I was trying to figure out what to what to write. Okay. What do you For think? Example, what do you think you, if we uh, talk about uh, some kind of food? Maybe I uh, right now I'm trying to write uh, using a uh, possessive the uh, relative clause. For okay. example, <clears throat> my sister, my sister, whose name is. Um, Elizabeth um, has three children. <clears throat> so I say, my sister whose name is Elizabeth has three children. That's, that's a non-defining clause because I can also say my sister has three children. And, and and the sentence is all it's making sense anyway. Uh huh. Okay. So using the, that same example, I can say, my sister Elizabeth has three children whose names are. Um, Alberto and Benjamin. Well, I think, well, it might be right. You said my sister Elizabeth has three children whose names, whose names are... are. Okay. Okay, let me try to, to make another one. Has uh, three children whose names are, are let's see. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> We're back to the room. Okay. Okay. Time is over. Um, let's see. Oh, we have just five minutes. Uh, I'm going to ask you um, to read one of the sentences to some of you, not all of you, but uh, at least two or three. And the rest going to, oh, okay, in the, each group is going to send me uh, the A sentences in the WhatsApp group, and I will be giving you a, a, a feedback. And I will explain you um, uh, some things there. So, but you have to send me the eight uh, sentences there to the WhatsApp group, okay? Uh, let's listen to Mr. Uh, Moran. Uh, yes, teacher. One of the non-defined, the one of the defining clauses will be, I call my grandmother who lives in San Salvador. Okay. And one of the non-defining should be, this car which costs a fortune is made in China. Okay, very good, excellent. Yes, very good. Uh, let's listen to Miss Celaya. Uh, um, Rafael Moran. So we we only did five sentences. 
four to defining relative and one to non-defining. Uh, just what did you say if, if, if you want to create a defining relative clause or a non-defining relative clause, you decide, but ah, okay. it, just with one, it's okay. Okay, defining relative. Um, that was the museum where we visit last weekend. Can you repeat it again? Because I, I didn't listen. Oh. Okay. That was the museum where we visit last weekend. Where? I think that you must include that instead of where. That we visit, that we visit last year, as you said. Uh, very good. Uh, but but, but um, it's a good example of, okay? Uh, Mr. Uh, Neftali, you are raising your hand? Yes, Mr. I'm okay. in the group the of uh, Ana Molina groups. So, um, hello? Okay, tell me. Okay, my example is use which. And I wrote that sentence it mentioned in the book history that which was the day of the twins towers tragedy okay uh, can you read it again in the history books that mention which was the day of the twins of the, of the twins towers tragedy Okay. In this case, uh, sir, we have made, we have omitted one verb uh, because remember that in relative clauses we have like two sentences in one, uh, and you need a verb at the end and also a complement if you want to complete the sentence. But but um, for the rest, it's okay. Okay. So we're using um, the relative clause. Uh, the relative clause. I mean. It's okay. Uh, well, when if, if you haven't finished, you can contact each other. There you have the WhatsApp group. And, and you can complete the A sentences. Uh, please, when you send the A sentences, uh, you can do it just one, one member of each uh, group uh, and write the name of, the, uh, of your classmates, okay? Create the A sentences, send it to WhatsApp group, write the name of your uh, classmates, and that's all. Do you have any question for me? Uh, teacher, uh, the non-relative non, uh, clauses must be different or could be the non-relative way of the relative. <laughs> Of the first four uh, sentences, I don't know if I. You, you're gonna you're gonna create um, four sentences for each one, like defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. That was your question, right? Yeah, but for example, I can write uh, similar ideas, but uh, using the different kind of clauses. Uh huh. Yes. That's what I tried to ask. Yes. 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 You can you can you you can do it in that way. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, anyone else? It was um, it is it was um homework per per group or is, or we have to bring uh, individual activity. No, just just one per each group. It's a it's a homework for each group. Uh, I mean, the homework you have you have to develop the homework or, or um, the three members of, of each group. But uh, the the person that is going to send the homework is just one, and that person has to include uh, the names. Thank you. Okay. Well, guys, uh, that's been all for tonight, uh, and I will see you tomorrow.
We're going to extend uh, more information about this topic tomorrow. And please, um, if you are, uh, if you can do it, uh, uh, if you can send, I mean, the homework after this video conference will be uh, perfect. Uh, I will be sending you some feedback and, and well, that's all. Uh, have a good night and see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Blessing for all of you. See you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye.